Okay. All right. Um, so yes, welcome. And um, as many of you know from um, the Connecticut Libraries, uh, we at the Connecticut Library Consortium have been working very closely with SWINK and their public performance movie licensing program to maintain and even enhance the value of your movie licenses during a time when indoor movie programming is not a possibility. So we wanted to make sure that the transition was as seamless as possible. And we worked with them to create a new renewal timeline for Connecticut libraries, which included three months of coverage. And um, Swank has also worked very closely with the movie studios they cover on the outdoor license exception, which is what we will be going over in depth today. Um, and CLC, you know, we've obviously recognized the need for guidance in planning and implementing outdoor movie events. So we're so thrilled to welcome our speakers today. Um, and um, first from Swank uh, Movie Licensing, we have Joe Swift joining us. He is the Copyright Licensing Manager for Public Libraries. Um, he's worked in a public library and he loves helping libraries and their movie programs uh, with their movie programs and their licensing needs. And he has two cats and a lizard and enjoys movies, traveling and concerts. And also from Swank, we have MJ Malik, who is the Customer Relationship Manager. Um, MJ partners with consortia across the country to ensure their members can make the most out of their movie programs. She is passionate about her customers, community engagement, and again, cats and coffee. Um, we will also be hearing from Nicole Lubers, the sales director from Swank Motion Pictures. And last but not least, um, our guest from the East Regional location of the St. Charles Parish Library in Louisiana is a youth services assistant, Taylor <laughs> Robert. She's worked for her system since 2009 in a variety of roles, including circulation, supervision, and programming. Um, she has a penchant for large scale events and it's been the thing she's missed most about uh, during the pandemic. I think we can all relate to that. Uh, she is part of a wonderful programming team at her library and she's lucky enough to have an administration who is incredibly supportive of her crazy ideas. So Taylor will be discussing her library's experiences with the outdoor movie exception and tips and tricks to make your event a success. Just a reminder to keep yourselves on mute unless you're talking. Um, and with that, I'm gonna hand it over to MJ. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, uh, we are really excited to be here to talk and collaborate with everybody today. I mean, we cannot thank Jen and her team enough at CLC. They have been an amazing partner. Uh, they're always an amazing partner and they have been for 15 years actually, which is really exciting, but they've been an especially great partner during this very difficult time when as an organization, Swank is trying to provide the most value and the most accommodations and you know be as helpful as we possibly can uh, during a time when, like Jen said, there's not really a lot that can be happening. So, you know, we are cautiously optimistic and looking ahead to a brighter, hopefully summertime and fall time. And uh, we really wanted to have this session early, early on in the year, so that that way there's lots of time for questions, collaboration, idea sharing, programming, and all of that. And I think it's great that this is being recorded today because I hope that we'll get a lot of really great tidbits that we can continue to share with, with everybody. And uh, we're really grateful that you guys are all here joining us today. And I will be here to answer specific questions, of course, about um, the, the renewal or the license or whatever general things. But Joe is really our expert when it comes to the site license. I'm sure lots of you have talked with him before. He is just got a, a breadth of knowledge that I can't even compare to when it comes to programming in public libraries because he obviously used to work in one. So that's very, very helpful to have him on our team. Um, so I will go ahead and shift gears to Joe, who will be kind of going through the license, where to find information on our website, and the exception as a whole. And then I'll also be screen sharing to show you guys some sections of our website that will be helpful to reference uh, afterward. So I will go ahead and mute myself and uh, let Joe uh, take it next. Thank you, MJ, and welcome, everyone. Uh, so the main thing we are going to be going over today is the outdoor exception. Uh, I'm sure as many of you aware, are aware, uh, outdoor showings used to not be covered under the annual license. Um, we worked closely with the movie studios to add an exception to allow a select list of films to be shown outdoors on library property as part of the annual license coverage. Um, 
really quickly before we dive into some of the more fun stuff, I'm going to go over some of the guidelines to make use of the outdoor exception. Um, first, the showings must be on library property. Since it's an exception to the library site license, they need to take place at the library site. Um, so if they are taking place outdoors, they just need to be outdoors in the library parking lot against the library wall. If the library has uh, some grass or a field, you know, that they own as part of their library property, the showings need to take place at the library outdoors. Um, the second main um, guideline is uh, maintaining the audience size. Um, these audience limits are uh, split into if you're doing a drive in type showing how many cars you can have, um, which at this time is 50 cars, um, or if you're doing uh, spaced out um, in person, uh, it just needs to be capped at 100 attendees. Um, so either one. So if you're doing the cars, you don't have to count how many people are in each car, as long as you know you reserve 50 spots for 50 cars, that's the limit for cars, or 100 people if they're in-person attending. Um, then some of the other important guidelines are advertising. Um, similar with the site license, advertising needs to be focused on library patrons. Um, so you can advertise the outdoor event on the library website in any handouts to library patrons or staffs, direct emails to library patrons. Um, and that's where advertising should primarily be focused. Um, that just helps us ensure that there's not any issues with the outdoor exception. Um, in, in addition to that, um, if you are doing a drive-in showing, uh, when advertising, we do ask that you don't advertise it specifically as a drive-in event. Um, that can get uh, kind of pop up on some people's radars and, and cause questions. Um, so if you are doing a, a drive-in type event, we just ask that you uh, call it something creative, wheels on, and reels, carpool cinema, something fun that doesn't flag as a, a drive-in movie event. Um, and we really appreciate if you can stick to those advertising guidelines because those help us continue to offer the outdoor exception. Um, and then the last and probably most important one is that you are following any state or local COVID-19 guidelines and, and spacing requirements. Uh, we obviously want to add the outdoor exception, so it is easy to have movie events that are safe, but we still want to make sure that everyone is following um, any state or local COVID-19 guidelines. Um, so that's kind of the less fun part of the outdoor exception and now we can uh, get into a little bit more of the the fun uh, which is some of the resources we have to help make the outdoor exception easier um, which we recently added a link on our website that we will share um, I, I believe clc has the link already um, and this will be where you can find the list of movies that are available um, to choose from, the form that needs to be completed to request approval for the outdoor events, um, and then just some helpful outdoor ideas. Um, on this link, the list of movies, um, which actually MJ is going to Yes, to pull I'm going to pull it up right now. And first, I wanted to make sure you guys know I saw some folks uh, furiously taking notes, uh, but we will make sure to send a recap. Uh, we'll work with Jen and make sure that all this information is is sent out hard copy as well. Like the order form is right here, or not order form, but it, it's essentially the confirmation approval form of like, yes, form. I will yeah. oh, approval. That's a better <laughs> word. Um, where you're just acknowledging the um, guidelines that Joe went over. And then in addition to that, we have listed the um, films right here, and we are continuing to add and grow this library. And so when we send you the link to the latest covered films, uh, it will show you, you know, what's available at this time as we continue to grow this, um, you know, group of films. Yeah, and currently there are right around 140 films that are available to choose from. Um, and we'll continue to refresh and update that to try to tie them to films that are relevant to certain times of the year. Um, so 
we'll keep updating that and refreshing it just to keep some some new movie options that are available for the outdoor exception and then we do try to keep a a good mix of films that you can choose from for that exception um and they and they can all be found here um you just like with the regular search on the website there's options to sort this and you can actually download an excel file with the, that download link um, that'll create an Excel list so you can have kind of a more easy format to just quickly browse through the movies that are available or if you need to share them with staff for coming up with the selection um, that's a really good easy way to go through the list quickly um, and you can sort by rating or filter out by rating and, and kind of reshuffle that to make it easier to look through. Um, and then available on the website is also the event form um, that is just to request approval. Um, it's a really quick form. Uh, it has the terms and conditions, which are the guidelines I went over. Um, and then just some basic information. We just want to know who you are, where the showing is taking place, what movie you selected, and what date you're going to show it on. Um, and then the plan for limiting the audience size. Um, and with this, um, you can request multiple events on one order form as long as you know the titles and dates that you're going to show on. Um, and we just recommend getting that to us um, a couple days before you want to begin promoting. Uh, we get a pretty quick turnaround and getting approval once this form is received. So make it really simple to get approval for use of the outdoor exception. Awesome. Um, Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. And then the no, only other thing I was going to mention uh, is at the bottom of the outdoor exception page, um, there are uh, a few ideas for uh, events that you can tie into the outdoor movie showings, and we'll continue to update that um, to provide helpful resources for outdoor events. Awesome. Well, I was going to hand it over to MJ because she will show some <laughs> new stuff that we have added to the customer hub. Um, yes. The outdoor exception isn't linked there yet. Um, we're hoping that that is something we can get added to the customer hub too, so you guys can easily find it. Um, but I'll yep. hand it over to MJ. Yep. Sorry, guys. Sometimes my audio gets a little glitchy and I accidentally talk over my coworkers. So uh, here on the customer hub, this has got a lot of um, ideas and information that will be helpful once you know programming is more up and running again. But if you're looking for ideas, from past years to uh, get excited about. We have discussion guides, uh, sensory friendly resources, the programming calendar, which has been updated to run uh, May to May. So it's got some ideas for summer reading programs right here, and then goes all the way through till next May with uh, as many new releases, classic favorites that we could, we could jam in there to get ideas. And then of course the publicity materials for sending that uh, information straight out to your patrons via a digital newsletter or um, you know some, some libraries still do paper newsletters, but there's the artwork right there that you can log in and download and utilize when you're communicating directly to your patrons. And then here's some more ideas, past Check It Out magazines, customer information, and I uh, just wanted to make sure you guys knew this resource was available because we uh, really created it for our public libraries right before the pandemic hit. So not a lot of folks have been able to kind of get on and, and utilize these resources. And so now that uh, you know it's there, hopefully you'll be able to get out there and get some more good information. And speaking of good information and utilizing everything, uh, I would love to kick it over to Taylor, who has been an incredible resource uh, for us using the outdoor exception with her site license. And so she's got a great um, story and a lot of great tips and tricks. So I will uh, mute myself and stop my screen share and let Taylor uh, rock and roll. Thank you so, Jay, so, so much, MJ. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Taylor Robert. Um, I am the Youth Services Assistant at the St. Charles Parish Library um, out here in Destrehan, Louisiana. That's about 20 minutes outside of New Orleans. Um, we are right in the middle of the swamp. Um, you can imagine all the fun things that we see on a daily basis. Um, so we went out um, for a lockdown right in March, I think most people was, that was about the time that we went in for lockdown. Um, we returned to our buildings um, in May um, of 2020. And at that time, um, I, we had been brainstorming all throughout the, the lockdown, um, what we could do to bring um, 
programming back to our patrons. We did offer a variety of virtual programming online via our social media sites, um, but we noticed that our patrons were hitting their limit and we were starting to kind of see things, um, a little bit of burnout. Um, and our numbers. Um, so when we got back, we started, you know, right, right back to work. What can we do? What can we offer? Um, and I suggested to my um, programming team that we do drive-in movies. We need to bring those back. Um, I've always wanted to do that. That's something that I've brought up many times before um, in my library system. And I've always kind of been told like, you're crazy. We can't do that. Um, and, you know, they kind of hesitated and kind of said the same thing. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that, we'll roll back. Um, so fast forward to October. So a little bit of context. Um, prior to my um, taking the youth services assistant position, I was the supervisor of this location. Um, and so I had actually accepted the job as the youth services assistant in March, five days before we went out on lockdown. Um, so I didn't actually come into this role until October of 2020. And in October of 2020, the first thing um, I got to do was plan our first outdoor movie event. Um, so the programming librarian and our assistant directors came back to me and they're like, you know what? It's not so crazy after all, let's do it. Um, so that's when we started really getting into the process and digging in. Um, my first thing that I did was I looked into rental services. Um, we do have a local service based out of New Orleans that does um, movies for you. Um, so they bring the, all the equipment, they provide staffing, um, they provide the movie. Um, it would just be up to us to take care of the licensing and all of if all of that in the promotion. Um, so looking into that and we realized that the cost for one rental service was almost the equivalent of the cost for us to purchase all of the equipment outright. Um, so we made the decision as a system um, that we would like to own that equipment so that we could create our movie kits. Um, and what we like to do is we like to create kits that we can share with other libraries in our system. Um, so we have six locations um, in the idea and a bookmobile. Um, and the idea was to be able to have all of this equipment that could travel from location to location and different sites um, and host these events at, at different sites for different patrons in our parish. Um, so uh, the next thing I did was contact our lovely swank, um, Joe, and he gave me all the information I needed. I filled out the forms, I picked the movies, um, sent that over. We do have a, a site license here. Um, our library system does have an annual subscription. So there wasn't too much hold up with that. And the next step for us um, was to order these supplies. Um, this was a collaboration of different departments. Um, I am not in charge of IT. Um, I have some tech savvy, but not a whole lot. So I went to our IT department next and kind of asked them, you know, what is a uh, projector look like that I would need for outside? What is um, the setup for connecting, you know, to, to project a movie? I had no idea. I, it was just in my brain that we were going to do this. Um, and our IT department was, was very, very helpful and was able to kind of guide me in the direction. Um, fortunately, we actually had um, projectors, usable projectors in house. So we did not have to purchase that as, a, as new equipment. That was something that we already had um, that we weren't using because we weren't having meetings. So we took a projector out of our meeting room. Um, and the only things that we ended up buying was the screen, um, the sound system for setup, um, a generator, um, and a new Blu-ray and DVD player that could live in this kit with all of this equipment. Um, so the next step was to also go to my maintenance department. Um, I checked with them, I'm like, how, how's electricity outside? They're like, no electricity outside. So that meant we definitely needed a generator. And you would think that as a resident of Louisiana, where we frequently have hurricanes, that I would know exactly how to use a generator. You are very wrong. I do not. <laughs> So that was something that I really needed to check with my maintenance department. You know, what type do we get? You know, is it going to last as long? How do you put the gas in it? How do you turn it on? Um, and once they walked me through it, we knew exactly um, how to, you know, move forward with this. Uh, and that was very interesting. I actually recorded our maintenance guy doing the generator because I'm like, I'm not going to remember. That's a lot of steps. 
<laughs> um, so that was like our biggest like, ooh, um, or my biggest stress. So um, setup and logistics. Um, how can how could we safely host this event and socially distance our patrons. Um, having the guidelines from Swank did actually help because that we had an idea of what the numbers were going to look like and how we were going to limit those numbers. We knew we could only have 50 cars or 100 attendees. And I think it was actually a lower number to start at the time. Um, but that gave us some guidelines to go on. So with that, we did use, um, we do use Evanced, um, sign up event calendar. Um, that is something that we have in our system. Um, and so we used that for patrons to be able to register and we limited registration. Um, we also did a map of the parking lot. So I actually got the plans for our building and I pulled up our parking lot and we went outside and we measured each individual parking spot and made sure they were all nine by nine, which is nine feet by nine feet. So that meant it was safe to have someone in a nine foot by nine foot um, space. And then we would, you know, cone off another space and then someone else could be in the very next one. Um, so by doing that, we kind of checkerboarded our parking lot and created a map um, so that we knew how we could have patrons set up so that people were socially distant and still being safe, even though we were outside. Um, and the first idea we had was that patrons would be in their cars. Um, as we started to test things out, we realized that that was not going to work. Um, we are in a swamp, as I have said. Um, we are basically a bowl. Uh, we don't have any hills or any kind of, you know, height. Um, so putting cars, you know, directly in front of each other, you couldn't actually see the screen. Um, so we made some adjustments there and decided to have our patrons. We would just designate a spot for them and that would be their, their spot. So then doing the thing, we did it. We totally did. Um, so staffing, the, the, for, the next thing I did was I checked with my staff. I'm like, how many staff do we need for this? How many patrons are coming to this event? What is setup gonna look like? Um, we knew we needed to get equipment set up. We knew we needed to cone off the parking lot and create these, these spaces. So we made sure we got about five staff each time. Um, again, this was a collaboration of different departments. This was staff from other branch locations who were interested in seeing how this was gonna go. Um, so there was programming staff involved, there was admin involved, maintenance, IT. We had kind of all hands on deck um, come and help us out. So the layout, um, and I do have uh, pictures that I can share of our, our parking lot, so I'll share that in a minute, um, of how we actually did it um, and how we checkerboarded our parking lot. Um, the day of setup, uh, the bulk of the work was setting up the screen and getting all of that set up. So the screen that we ended up ordering, it was a 22-foot inflatable screen. Um, so it did take some time to kind of inflate. So, you know, first things first, we had to set up the generator, get that running. Um, we had to make sure not to set that up too early because with the generator, you can run out of gas and then everything kind of, ooh. so we made sure to set up like at a, at a good enough time that it wasn't too early before the start of the event, um, but soon enough that we were going to be ready when patrons started arriving. Um, so we inflated the um, screen, um, troubleshooting that. A lot of us are very short. Um, I myself am a 4'10". I am not even five feet tall and the screen is 22 feet. So putting that up uh, did present a challenge um, in and of itself. And it did take several staff members and we were like, okay, who's the tallest here? Who can really be doing this? Um, and so that's kind of how we, we geared it. So what I did um, for the day of setup was I actually created a checklist. And with that checklist, we gave um, staff assignments so that each person was kind of in their designated space um, that helped us as staff to be socially distant. Um, and it also helped us to get all of the work done um, before patrons began arriving. So we actually had um, some staff were assigned to set up the screen and the generator and that type of and the sound equipment. And we had some staff in the parking lot setting up cones. We had other staff directing patrons where to park. Um, so we do have two parking lots. Uh, we have our front main um, patron parking and then we have staff parking on the side. 
we chose to do this as an after hours event. Um, and with minimal staff, we were able to guarantee that there were enough spots for patrons to park in our staff parking, which left our main patron parking lot open and available for our movie. Um, our first event, um, even though we were very careful and we created guidelines and rules for patrons, which we made sure they got in a variety of forms, including when they signed up as an additional email and a phone call before event. And we did call our patrons before to kind of see, you know, gauge what our registration was going to be, what the turnout was going to be. Um, patrons began showing up with some of them thinking, oh, it's an outdoor movie event. Um, I don't need to wear my mask. So we did have to kind of troubleshoot that um, and, and relook at how we um, presented the information to patrons to make sure that they knew to be safe and when they were interacting with staff or entering our building at any time that they were following the um, state and local guidelines, which we are mandated to wear masks down here in St. Charles Parish. So we did have to kind of, you know, reset. How do we how do we make sure that we get this information to them and they understand that even though we're outside, we still need to be safe. Um, our very first event um, was great. It went off without a hitch, except halfway through the movie, the police showed up. So just uh, as a tip for you guys, um, please make sure you contact your local sheriff's office or your security um, and make sure they're aware that you're having an after hours outdoor event in your parking lot so that you don't get raided by the police. That didn't actually happen. He, it was just one cop car and he showed up and he was kind of like, what's going on? We definitely invited him to join us, but he, no dice, he was, you know, on the clock. Um, so being that we live in the swamp, Mosquitoes are a big problem here. Um, we did make sure that the start of our movie was well after dark and the worst of the mosquitoes do come out around dusk. Um, I don't know how it is in Connecticut, but that's how it is down here. So we kind of were very aware of that. So during setup, um, we were very cautious. We used lots and lots and lots of mosquito spray. Um, we did not provide any for patrons, but it was something when we called them ahead of time, we gave recommendations. You should definitely bring bug spray. You will be outside. There are bugs. Um, we got a food truck for our second event. So once we had our first event under our belt and we felt like, you know, we can do this, we were confident. Um, we have a local food truck we reached out to and she was able to come and be on site for our event. Um, so that was if patrons wanted to go and purchase additional snacks, they could. Um, we didn't have any specific rules against food except no glass or alcohol. Um, we did provide um, sealed popcorn bags, one for each patron and sealed um, drinks. So like Capri Sun pouches for patrons. I think it was actually Kool-Aid jammers is what we did. Um, so these were individually sealed popcorn bags um, that we handed out. These, this was not, we didn't pop some popcorn ourselves and hand out open bags. We were trying to make sure we were safe, but still making it fun and to feel like an actual movie event. Um, we had to cancel some of our events because of the weather. Um, if you get an inflatable screen, so some people might choose to get a different type of screen where it's set up against the side of your building um, or it's a roll down screen. There are all different types of screens, which I started to learn when I looked into the equipment purchasing process. We got an inflatable screen, which meant that wind and rain was an issue. Um, rain is also an issue for projectors. Projectors um, are going to be your highest priced item because to get a good projector, um, they, they are not cheap. Um, and the thought of getting it wet, we were very concerned about that. So it drizzled our very first event. It started drizzling right when we went up to set up. So we, we called it, we canceled that one. Um, another, our, our third event we were going to have, we tried it at a different um, library site. And when we put up the screen, the wind turned it into a sail and we were going to float away if we continued with this. So we had to call that one as well. Um, it was upsetting to have to do that, um, but we knew in the long run, waiting for better weather. I mean, we didn't want people sitting out in the rain either. That's just wasn't going to fly with us. Um, we used, uh, our team used uh, primarily Microsoft Teams um, for sharing files, communicating and that type of thing. So all of the files that I created, and I'll do a screen share in a minute if that's okay, um, to show you guys like all of this stuff 
that all of our planning forms and all of the maps and everything we put in one spot. So anyone who was part of the programming team or part of this team had access to these files at any time so they could go jump in, see what was going on, ask questions, um, if they had thoughts about something, you know, it takes a team to come up with really good ideas. It's not just one person. So sometimes you think you have the perfect way to do something and someone else comes in and they're like, why didn't you just do this? And it's like, that's a great idea. Um, we also, as I said, we use advanced event calendar and that's how we do registrations for patrons. Um, so, yep, that's, that's all the um, stuff I think I have. So I'll go ahead and start doing my screen share if that's okay, MJ. That would be amazing and so, so helpful. And we've seen some great questions uh, as Joe and Taylor have been talking and we'll make sure to address those here in just a second. Nikki's got a lot of great information for all of the offsite questions that we're seeing in the chat. So she's gonna come next after Taylor gives us kind of a rundown of all the great information that she has. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Make sure I click on the right. I'm gonna start with some pictures. I'll start the slideshow. So this was um, when we were testing our equipment and you have an idea of what our screen looks like and the size of it. Um, so the inflatable screen, it was very easy to set up um, aside from being short <laughs> and needing to tie it down. Um, we did actually put it on top of a tarp um, because Louisiana swamp, it's humid, the grass is gonna be wet. Um, so we did have a median right in the middle of our parking lot that we were able to place it on um, that allowed for the most, we weren't actually using any of the spots. All of our patrons could be, you know, in the actual parking lot and no one had to be on the grass. So this is how we coned things off, um, me and my lovely safety vest. So we were we were very, very concerned about safety. This is a parking lot people are driving. Um, so we made sure that any staff member who worked this event wore a reflective vest and you can buy these in bulk on Amazon for really cheap. Um, we also got had these little cones from previous events when we've done um, little kitty games. I mean, these are just little like soccer cones and we used these to mark off um, spaces where patrons could not sit to allow for um, social distancing. So you can see these, these parking spots are nice and big and long in our swamp behind me. So this was a picture taken from our second event. Um, so you can kind of see patrons, we encourage them to bring their own chairs and seating. Um, and this is the screen set up and you can see it was nice and bright. So I was like all the way in the back um, of the parking lot and you could, you could see um, very well. And our variety of <laughs> bug repellents, um, very, very necessary um, for any outdoor event, especially down here in the South. Um, our first event um, was also, it coincided with our superhero dress down day here at work. Um, and we just so happened to be showing Black Panther, total coincidence. Um, so a lot of us dressed up as superheroes. So that was uh, me dressed up as Raven from Teen Titans. Um, and then the second picture, this is our second event um, takedown. We were professionals at that point. We knew exactly how to take things down. Um, it actually does not take as long to take things down as it does to set up, as you can imagine. Um, but the screen being inflatable was full of air. So how many library workers did you think it took to deflate that screen? You can see us all kind of crawling across it. Um, I am right here in the corner. Um, this is my programming librarian and these are two programming team staff members. And finally, um, when we had our food truck, this is our um, glorious director, uh, Miss Leanne and her daughter, they attended one of our events and they came out for the food truck. Um, so they were getting their food. Um, and as an additional safety precaution, you want to make sure to walk around the perimeter of your um, site and, and make sure there are no critters um, hanging out. So you see this little alligator guy, he was somewhere. <laughs> And we just were very aware of him and kind of looked around and um, we made sure that he was not on site when we had our actual event. Okay. Those are the pictures. Um, and then I have my teams. So this is where I had a bunch of my documentation um, saved in teams where I could share it easily with our team members. I also saved everything here. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you um, the parking lot map. 
so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so this is our parking lot map. It is a very rough. I am not a professional graphic designer. Um, I think it's still on your on your presentation. Oh, oh okay. Question. Thank you. Thank you for saying yep. that. Let me, I'm going to do new share. Okay, I see, I see. How's that? Okay, perfect. There you go. Sorry about that. Um, the Zoom's kind of strange. Does I think I'm doing the right thing and then I'm not. Um, so this is a rough guide to our, our parking lot. So I used plans from our building and I just overlaid it um, with very simple shapes. <laughs> so that we could see what we were doing. And this map was given out to staff who were helping with this event so that they knew um, where patrons were gonna be and where cones were gonna be. Um, and it also kind of gave guidelines for where patrons were needed to park. Um, I have a little legend on the side that tells you what's what, where staff were gonna be parking, where the screen was gonna be set up. Um, and each person working this event got this. They also got, and I will jump back to, let me see, new share. sure that I'm sharing the right thing. Okay, here we go. Can you guys see um, my documents? Do you see that? Yeah, the list of documents? Yes, yes. Okay, okay awesome. All right, so I can show you my checklist that I made. Um, we also came up with um, specific guidelines. Um, I'll go ahead and open this. Oh, sure. <laughs> So can you see this showing up? Yeah. All right. Um, so we created these. Um, these were little cards that I also gave to staff. So all staff had this on hand. Um, but this is information that was given to patrons. Um, and as I said, in a variety of ways, um, we wanted to make sure we were being safe and we wanted patrons to be aware um, of our rules. Um, they're pretty simple. It was basically just to follow the, the social distancing guidelines um, and to, to listen to staff, you know, because we were gonna direct you to your spots and make sure that you had the best movie experience. Um, we did have um, our library, our entrance open, um, just our lobby. Um, we were able to, to lock our, our main building, but we kept our lobby open so that patrons could utilize our public restrooms um, and at any time during the event. And we did have staff um, set up there to make sure that people were following the guidelines when they entered the building. Um, we did ask that patrons did not smoke or vape. This is a public event. This is on library property. Um, and funny enough, we felt we needed to include this. Um, no grilling or open fires or burning allowed. Um, this is Louisiana. <laughs> um, and people, you know, tailgate and have crawfish boils. And we do a lot of outdoor events. Um, so we just wanted to cover all our bases. Some of these guidelines were taken from, we have a, um, a local art center um, in our parish. It's, it's through the school um, and they started showing movies as well um, before us, but these were paid movies. Um, so you actually had to pay, I think it was $30 a person to get in and then you had to pay for a food ticket. So we're like, no, we're library, we're free, we're gonna do it. Um, but we took some of their guidelines from them. Um, so that helped us. So I didn't you know, come up with this all on the fly. And I have my checklist. Oh, um, let me show you guys. So uh, before Swank came up with all this fancy, wonderful promotional material, um, we do have um, one of our staff members has a graphic design background um, and she created this very lovely um, flyer for us for each of our events. Um, she actually drew this out and um, Procreate um, and created this. And we just gave her our logo to include and in all of the information that we needed in there. So we were able to send these out to patrons as handouts and have flyers in house in our library. Navigating, I have so many screens open. <laughs> and then while Taylor is pulling up her um, last uh, checklist to kind of show everybody, um, I just wanted to let you know that I know we're uh, at 1041. So after we have Nikki review some information for the offsite events, uh, we will leave plenty of time to, to ask additional questions at the end. That way we give everybody a chance, but continue to keep putting things in the chat because that's kind of where we'll start um, to answer as we go down the line. 
All right, so the last thing I'm going to show you guys, this is the checklist that I created for staff working the event. Um, so as I said, we designated staff assignments, so it broke it down by kind of area that needed to be set up. So we have equipment set up um, and what it, that entailed, all of the materials that were needed. Um, we have the cone set up for the parking lot um, with a mini version of the map. We also had our registration set up. So we did have a dedicated staff member checking registration. Um, we had very specific instructions for this staff member that if we were full, we were full. Um, and that this was based on the SWINK um, licensing guidelines. Um, so we were very, very careful with that and made sure to um, communicate that to patrons so that they understood. Um, we didn't have any problems, actually. We had a great uh, turnout and um, no one, not too many. Um, and then the last thing was uh, we had our little snack table. So we had someone assigned to that. Um, and that was the person who handed out the, the snacks as patrons came in and kind of gave them a rundown of how things were gonna go. And I do have um, a listing of all of the equipment that we purchased that I can share with you guys. Um, I don't, I'm, I won't pull it up now, but we purchased most of our equipment from Amazon um, for fairly cheap. Um, the total cost of all of, our, all of our equipment was about $1,100. And then we spent um, very little more to get things like cones, reflective vests, and flashlights. And I'm going to start. That is awesome. Taylor, thank you so, so much. I know Jen and, and Joe and Nikki and I are just like, you know, because this is more information than we've ever heard from an event before. So hopefully it's it's really helpful. I mean, I don't know if the alligators are as relevant in, in Connecticut, but maybe I've, I've never been to Connecticut, so it could be. Uh. Maybe not alligators, maybe like a mountain lion. I don't know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So a lot of the questions we've had so far are about what if I want to show an event off of my library property? Uh, as Joe mentioned earlier, like this is an exception. We were able to get the, the, as a licensed member, if you follow some guidelines, you can utilize movies within the license. And um, it really is specific to the library property. It's essentially trying to have an extension of the inside to be on your lawn or your parking lot. But we also know that there's a lot of uh, community spaces that uh, libraries want to utilize or partner with local other organizations. So Nikki's going to kind of reference that and then we'll circle back to more questions on the chat. Thanks, MJ. Really nicely done, Taylor. Um, so I oversee the division uh, of our company that provides outdoor licensing um, and title by title licensing across a variety of markets. Uh, park and recreation departments, museums, restaurants, businesses, etc. Um, we do, as MJ mentioned, uh, recognize that not every library has the ability or the space um, to show an outdoor movie on property. Um, we too have made an exception um, if you are needing to use an offsite location, uh, we will license that at a discount. So th the way the standard licensing works is the, the fees are based on the anticipated crowd size and then the film itself. And on average, it, it, it typically averages out to about a couple bucks a person. Um, with the library discount offsite um, exception that we've made uh, for this year, um, it ends up being about half off of that standard licensing. So some really great savings there. Um, something to note, um, our division does work pretty regularly with libraries pre-COVID um, that chose to do outdoor movies both on and off property. Um, and so another thing to keep in mind even beyond uh, COVID and, um, excuse me, this, this outdoor exception. If there is an interest to continue outdoor movies, um, we do offer like quantity discounts if you're considering doing um, like a series across the summer, uh, multiple films within a year. Um, pardon me, I'm fighting a bit of a cold this morning. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, well, and Nikki's team is great about these bigger audiences, and, and we know that there are the guidelines that we've had to put in place to keep the exception, and there's a lot of great ideas that go above and beyond that, and her team is just well-versed in making sure that they make it as easy as possible to walk through all of that with you all. Yeah, I mean, good point. So um, our team you know, licenses these outdoor movies day in and day out. And beyond just providing the licensing, um, you know, we, we definitely 
uh, partner with our customers to ensure that they have a successful event. So a lot of the, the tips and tricks that Taylor um, shared um, are, are definitely resources that our team can help with as well. You know, things like um, how to promote, you know, ideas and resources on how to promote the event. Um, ideas and resources for how to enhance the event. Um, you know, I love that you did a food truck. We work with a lot of like park and recreation departments that do uh, a movie coupled with like their food truck Fridays. Um, we have some that take it a step further and do themed events. Uh, they theme the food truck with the film. So all those types of fun ideas that are really going to attract more people and engage your community and just um, enhance the overall experience. Um, we're here to, to help. Um, in terms of equipment, uh, that is another area that we are um, very familiar with. Swank doesn't partner direct with any equipment providers. However, we do have relationships with equipment providers across the country. So if you're looking to rent, um, please feel free to reach out to us and uh, we can see if we have a contact in your area. Um, as Taylor mentioned, they, they made the decision to purchase the equipment. Um, we have many reoccurring customers that have made that decision as well. Um, it definitely tends to be more cost effective if you're looking to do multiple events. Um, and just something to keep in mind, you know, a lot of those customers that have decided to purchase um, often subsidize that uh, the cost of securing the equipment through other local partnerships, um, fundraising events uh, with the local community. You know, we have many that will just ask for donations um, at their movie events to go towards uh, the cost of the equipment. So always think about maybe other groups in your community that are showing films um, maybe they are, have already purchased it and you can borrow it from them. If they haven't purchased it and they are paying, uh, the expense of renting every time, maybe you guys can come together, uh, and split the cost of the equipment. Um, just a, some things to think on, uh, think about on that end. Um, the other thing just to, to add, I know Taylor is doing, uh, socially distanced outdoor movies. Um, drive-in movies have been hugely popular this year uh, in response to the pandemic. Um, one thing to keep in mind, in addition to the list of the uh, necessary equipment needed for an outdoor event, if you are gonna do a drive-in, you also need FM transmitters. So if you're renting equipment, many of the equipment providers already have FM transmitters. Just be sure to confirm with them that they do. If you are purchasing, you will want to purchase um, an, uh, the FM transmitters. That's a great point. And Nikki, I had a question actually. Sure. If they buy the FM transmitter, do they, do they then also need to go and pay a station to use it? Or um, how does that work? You okay. find an unused station. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're, to my knowledge, uh, no added expense uh, for the drive-in. Um, for a drive-in screener uh, screening beyond the purchase of the FM transmitters. Awesome, thank you. I had that question. Yeah. I didn't even know. And I'll just, you know, I'll mention, you know, Joe mentioned if you're doing a drive-in, please refrain from using the word drive-in in your promotion. Um, that's just because that is a a term, much like theater, that is reserved for those commercial um, brick and mortar and commercial drive-in theaters. So. Um, we have to be very careful to not come across as if we are trying to compete uh, with those commercial first run theaters in our local areas. So that's why we have some of those additional advertising guidelines in place to ensure that you don't have an upset theater owner who is um, even more sensitive this year um, since they've been closed for much of you know, 2020 and, and you know, the start of 2021 concern that your screenings are creating competition. So that's a little bit uh, more about why that uh, ask is in place with coming up with something clever. Uh, wheels and reels, um, carpool cinema are probably the two most common that we've seen across our customers. Yep. Awesome. So. 
Nikki, you're the best. I'm so glad we have oh, you here. It is an additional resource for everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Jen, I won't take, I won't steal your thunder. I know you are, you are the, the woman of the hour in charge of all the, the Q and A. I did just want to quickly answer the question about the FM transmitter. Um, you don't need an FM transmitter and an outside sound system. It would be either or. So it just depends on what audio visual equipment you have, what kind of space you have, um, all of that. And if you have the FM transmitter, the drive-ins I've been to locally, I have to like keep my car on, but not running. So it, it should be fine as long as your battery's not really old um, as, as far as running the battery down. But yeah, if someone hasn't replaced their battery in five years, maybe they don't want to do the FM transmitter because it, it, something could happen. But uh, yes, you do have to have your car actually on, just not running, Yes, if that makes sense. Yeah, that, And that I answered. see a lot of the questions are about, um, outdoor space that you can use. Um, again, the main thing we want to emphasize is the license. This is an exception to the license that you have. Um, so that license covers the physical address of the library. So the showing needs to take place at that physical address. Um, so for example, like if you can have the screen on the library wall, um, you know, if people space out to a field that maybe is not the library property specifically, that's still the, the screen is on library property and it's taking place at the library. When it becomes a need where you need the standard outdoor licensing is when you're not going to have any aspect of it on the library property when you are moving to the park or a different parking lot or the community center then you will definitely need to speak with um, Nikki's team to get the standard outdoor licensing options. Um, and as she mentioned, they are working on providing discounts if you do need to utilize a different space than the library property. Yes, thanks, Joe. Yeah, there's a, I've gotten a lot of questions about that. And I see the first two at least here are also asking about that. So I think that answers that for everybody. Um, there was also another question here. Um, that if they can advertise the name of the movie, which I also would love to know the answer to as well. I used to show movies at my old job and they always said we couldn't use the name and I wasn't sure where that came from or we never did, but I just <laughs> was curious um, with for the outdoor movies, can they advertise the name? Yeah, so um, similar to for indoor showing, you can use the name of the movie when you are advertising on the library's website um, into communications sent directly to library patrons or handouts that are going to be only inside the library. Um, if it's going to be anything outside of library patrons is when we ask that you do not use the title. So you can advertise that a movie event is taking place and to check the library's website for, for titles um, or you know call the library to ask what title is being shown. And especially in um, during this time using the exception as Taylor pointed out, this is like a pre registration situation you don't just want to leave it wide open for anybody to, to come on by because that's going to make it really hard to control the um, amount of people showing up. And so if you can if you are advertising publicly or you put something about there is a movie on Friday on your on your Facebook, while it should not include any of the title or studio information, if the link that goes back to your website, you really want them to go back to your website anyway, because that's where the calendar information is. It drives patron pa traffic to your website, which has all kinds of other valuable resources and information and programs. And it can also have the link to register to make it even clearer. These guidelines need to be followed and you need to pre-register if you wanna be able to be included in this event. Um, so yes, you can use it in specific situations. Uh, and then just when it's public, try to be more vague and drive that traffic back to your website. Cool, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Debbie has a similar question from Brookfield. Um, she said that the, you know, there's other um, local bulletin boards or um, community organizations that pick up on the advertising and promote it. Is that allowed or does it have to be strictly from the library marketing sources? So yeah, that is a great question. If they are picking it up from the like your social media, then hopefully they'll pick up that it, there's no studio or title information and they won't try to go and find that and put that up there. I would just suggest if you see that someone has taken that information from your website or from a direct patron communication that you ask them not to do that. I mean, 
you can only do so much. You're, you're you yeah. know, you you we know you're a library, we know you're slam and busy and you've got volunteers and everything going on, but if you see it, just ask them nicely not to do that. I mean, that's yeah. really and, all that you can do. To reinforce that, it's not you're not policing this. You don't have to run around yeah. town and tear down all the flyers that someone else put up, but if you see that they're starting to share that information, if you can give them the appropriate, like, oh, you took this flyer from us that has a title, can you use this flyer instead to just advertise that it's a movie event? Um, we really appreciate that. It helps keep uh, any of those concerns from popping up. Right, just like the generic uh, one that, you know, they Taylor's library designed. I mean, that was, that's really A plus and, and perfect for, for public information. Yeah, that was a great sign. <laughs> um, um, I'm always so jealous of people that have graphic design skills because I have none. Um, uh, and Debbie also wants to know um, when they when anyone um, submits the application for the outdoor movie, would it be um, should they include rain dates? Because you know, as Taylor mentioned, um, that is a possibility to have to move the date. Uh, yeah. So when we receive the form, um, I will request approval and then make note of the title and date that was requested. Um, if the date needs to be changed due to rain or technical difficulties, all they need to do is email me the new date, um, and then I'll just update our records. I'll just say the date was shifted to this. They don't have to resubmit the form. They don't have to provide that ahead of time as long as they just notify us that we didn't do the showing on this date. It's going to take place on this date. I'll update our records, and they're good to go. Great. Great. Um... Let's see, uh, Christina, I, I don't know if this was already kind of answered, but she said, I'd love any tips on sound and ensuring everyone can hear the movie. So um, that was kind of the sound system or of uh, FM transmitter, right? Taylor, do you have any good tips on what you guys used for your outdoor showing? Sure, yes. Um, so we ordered um, two large speakers. Um, they're like party speakers. Um, uh, for our movies and we were able to just have those speakers and have the sound turned all the way up and we had no problems um even you know I sat all the way in the back of the parking lot for for most of you know the the entirety of the movie um and we could hear all the way back there um we did it it was a little low um it, as we are next to a, a main road um so we did consider upgrading our sound system um after having these multiple events um but in a smaller setting it probably would have worked fine and we didn't need to use the fm transmitter transmit transmitters at all excuse me okay that's thank you for that um and yes thanks uh i i did see yvonne that you had your hand up did you um ask a question MJ answered it when she was oh, talking. Oh, she did. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. I just read your mind, Yvonne. That's my skill <laughs> through Zoom. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I did see one question about, uh, with the library exception, are there fees for the movies themselves or is it included in our annual fee? Perfect question. I'll answer it kind of a little comprehensively, but quickly, because I know we're short on time. Um, the um, When you go to the outdoor exception part of the website, which is the link we'll send you, the list of movies that are uh, included with that exception when you follow the guidelines are right there. So there's about 129 right now, and there is no additional fee. You do have to acquire your own legal content. So you would want to go buy the DVD, and then you can show it there legally. There's not an additional fee because you are a, a licensed annual customer of ours. As long as you follow those guidelines, you're good to go with showing any of those titles. And then if you want to do something different or have a larger audience, that's when Nikki's team would help you with uh, the discounted uh, outside license separate from the annual licensing fee. And just make sure you complete the outdoor request form. That's the only thing we ask. There's no fee as long as you submit that and we approve the event, then you are good to go as part of your annual license coverage. Yes, and um, we've we've shared that um, on all of our communications about movie licensing from CLC. But um, as MJ said, you know, I think it would be helpful if we kind of just gathered all the resources we talked about today together, and I can send them um, to all the people on this um, call and everybody who registered, just so you have it all in one place. So we'll definitely follow up with you guys after. There was one last great question and um, 
Nikki can probably answer it very quickly. And it said, if we're going to have the event offsite and if we partner with another organization, are we eligible to get a discount? I don't know the answer to that, Nikki. How does that work? Yeah, I would, um, uh, I would reach out to Swank and we'll put you in touch with an account executive that can walk through what those pricing options are available. Uh, but yes, most likely we'd be able to honor the discount. Awesome. Well, guys, and, and this outdoor exception is included for all of 2021. Uh, as of now, you know, we are all keeping a very close eye on all of the guidelines and, and the continued progress uh, with the pan pandemic situation that we're in. And like I said earlier at the beginning, we just can't thank Jen and CLC enough for allowing us this time to all connect and share ideas and, and tailor with all of her event information that she shared. So we'll make sure that we get follow-up information to Jen that she can get out to everybody in addition to the recording so that you guys have as much information as possible. I mean, the generosity, Taylor, of you and your group to share all this information uh, with an entire other organization in Connecticut is very, very valuable and we really, really do appreciate it. Yes, I can't thank you enough, Taylor, for coming on that. That was wonderful. Um, and so, so helpful. It's always so, it's so valuable to see the little bits and pieces because that's always what you think about, you know, oh my gosh, I, I sure I can put it on an outdoor event, but then you think about the logistics and we've been getting so many questions about that. So I am so grateful to have your knowledge and thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your busy day. Um, we really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, and I see your team is saying you're amazing. So that's nice. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been great. I mean, that's the goal, right? Share all the information so everyone can do all the awesome things. Yes, that's the best part of librarians. We all share ideas. <laughs> all righty. Well, it looks like we answered all the questions and um, I will be posting the um, recording. Actually, I'm gonna end recording now before I forget. Um, 